Okay, this is um, part two of 7.1. Um, we just wanted to go ahead and give some more examples here. So if we go into these problems here, I like to again draw the problems. So it says find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equals two minus x squared and g of x equal to x, okay? So I do wanna graph that to see what it looks like. Now, I know Oh, I do have a problem though. In the previous example, they told us the bounds, the lower limit and the upper limit. They told me between these two x values, x equal to zero and x equal to one. Here, they didn't tell me what x values I should be looking at, okay? In order to find those x values, basically what you need to find is where these two functions intersect. If you know where they intersect, then you'll be able to section off a, um, a region and that will be the region that you take the area of. So if I wanna find where these two things intersect, what I need to do is set them equal to each other. And so I'm gonna set everything over to the right hand side. And then if I factor that, I get x equals negative two and x equals one. So these are the two bounds that I'm going to use, which means I do need to draw some more of my graph over to this side. And I don't need so much of my graph on this other side, okay? So if I plug in negative two into here, that will be four, two minus four is negative two. So that's down here. If I plug in one, I will get one. And it should be the same here, right? If you plug in negative two, you get negative two. And if you plug in one, you get one because that's where they're equivalent to each other. But if I need to know which one's on the top and which one's on the bottom, I'm gonna need some more points. So I'm gonna plug in negative one and zero into both of these functions as well to figure out what their graphs look like. So when I plug in negative one, I'll get positive one. When I plug in zero, I will get positive two. And then of course, when you plug in positive one, you get positive one. So it looks like this. Well, something like that. Remember I told you these are sketches. I'm an awful draw, drawer, if that's a word. Um, I just, want to get an idea of what they look like. And this is a squared function, so it should be a parabola, and it does open downward because of the negative. Okay, so this does have, follow that correct shape. Now for here, if I plug in negative one, I get negative one, and if I plug in zero, I get zero. And this one should be a straight line. Okay, so this region in here is what I'm going to be finding the area of. Now again, to help me with my left, right, top, and bottom, all that, I like to draw a rectangle, and it doesn't matter where you draw the rectangle. I just like to have one in there. Okay. Now, again, my functions are in terms of x, so I should be using dx, which is why I used a vertical rectangle. Okay. Now, if I set up my area, I know I'm going to be having dx. That's the width of this rectangle here, but what is the height of it? It's this top function minus this bottom function. The top function is two minus x squared. The bottom function is just x. And then what are my rectangles spanning across? If they go all the way over here, that x value is negative two. And if they go all the way over here, this x value is positive one. So those are my lower and upper bounds. Now, if I use some algebra to simplify this, I will get negative x squared, negative x, and positive two. And then if I integrate that, I get negative x cubed over three minus x squared over two plus two x. And then I evaluate at these values. 
So if I plug in one into each of these, I get negative one third minus one half plus two minus, when I plug in negative two, I will get a negative and a negative, so positive eight thirds, negative four halves, and negative four. I'm trying to squish it in there. Okay, now if I distribute, I simplify some of these fractions and distribute this minus, I end up with negative one third, negative one half, plus two, minus eight thirds, plus two, plus four. And so if I type all of that in my calculator, um, negative one third, minus one half, plus two, minus eight thirds, plus two, plus four. I end up with 4.5, which is nine over two. So we get our area of nine over two. Okay, for example three, it says find the area of the region between the graphs of f of x equals 3x cubed minus x squared minus x and g of x equals negative x squared plus 2y. Again, I'm not given um, vertical lines, x equal to this or x equal to that. So I do need to find those values. So we will set each, both of these functions equal to each other and then try to solve it. So if I add x squared over to this side and I minus 2x over to that side, I will get x cubed, the x squareds will cancel, and I'll get negative 12x equal to 0. If I factor out a 3x, I get x squared minus 4, and if I factor that inside the parentheses, I get x minus 2 and x plus 2. So if I set each factor equal to 0, I get x equal to 0, x equal to 2, and x equal to negative 2. So this function actually intersects in three different places, which means um, I'm going to have two different regions. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that together. Let's see... Okay, this is as best as I can do this. So if I plug in negative 2 into this function, let's see what we get. Um, negative 2 will be negative 8 times 3 is negative 24 minus a 4 plus a 20. So I get negative 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8, this will be positive 8, I get negative 8 for negative 2. If I plug in 0, oh let's just plug in all 5 values. Um, if I plug in 1, I'll get 3 minus 1 minus 10, which is positive 8. No, that can't be right. Oh, negative one. I'm plugging in negative one. So this will be three times negative one, which is negative three. That'll be plus one, and that'll be plus ten. So 
so I get 6. So that means for negative 1, I have a point here at 6. For 0, I will have 0. For positive 1, I will get negative 8, which is down here. And then for positive 2, I will get 0. So this is a cubic function, and it does follow that idea. These values that I'm getting has this shape, okay, which does look like a cubic function. Now, this other function here, I'm going to evaluate it at these negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So let's see that function. What does it look like? So I get negative 8 as well as anticipated because that's where they intersect. I get negative 3. So not quite negative 4, but negative 3 here. Then I'll get 0 and 0 because that's where they intersect. And then I'll get positive 1 here. So about right there. Now this one is a squared function opening downward. So it does come back here. So it's going to go like this. Okay. And it would continue that way, but I'm not concerned with where they're continuing. Because this one continues this way, that one, and that one. But these ends are going forever. So those are not going to be our regions. So I'm not going to use that when I'm talking about this problem. So I've got two regions here. I've got one region here on the left, and then I've got another region here on the right. Which means if I wanna calculate the area of this entire region, I really have to break up the interval into two pieces. And the reason why is because in this section, notice your top function is the cubic, right? But over here in this section, if I were to draw a rectangle, my top function is not the cubic, it's the square. So because the top and bottom functions swap sides, we have to break this integral up into two parts, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is work on setting up the first, the left side, and then we'll set up the right side. So my area is going to equal so just this section, it starts at negative 2 and it goes to 0. And the top function is the cubic function. The bottom function is the squared function. And then of course the width is dx. And again, my growth functions were given to me in terms of x, which is why I drew a vertical rectangle and is why I have a dx here. Now the second in, um, region here, if I draw a rectangle, I have from the left side, which is zero, to the right side, which is positive two. My top function this time is the squared function and my bottom function is the cubic function. And then of course my width is dx. So if I do the algebra for both of these, I can simplify them. So this will become positive, this one would become negative. I'll have three x cubed. The x squared will cancel. Negative 12 x dx plus this will become negative, this will become positive, this will become positive. So the x squareds will cancel again, and I'll have negative 3x cubed and a positive 12x. So if I integrate, I have 3x to the fourth over 4 minus 12x squared over 2, which is just 6x squared evaluated from negative two to zero, 
plus negative 3x to the fourth over 4 plus again 12x over 2 which is just 6x evaluated from 0 to 2. So when I do that I will get 2 to the fourth which is 16 times 3 48 divided by 4 I get 12 minus I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be plugging in 0 first. If I plug in 0, I'm just going to get a big fat 0. Minus, if I plug in negative 2, I get positive 12. Minus 4 times 6 is going to be 24. Plus, if I plug in 2, I'm going to get negative 12. Mm, if I plug in 2, yep, I'm going to get negative 12. And then if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 24. So let's see what we end up with here. We end up with, distribute this negative, negative 12 plus 12. Distribute this positive, we get negative 12, oh, I'm sorry, negative 12 plus 24, and then negative 12 plus 24. Well, these two negative 12s are going to cancel one of the 24s. So I get an area of 24 square units altogether.